Right, so future pathways. Where do we go in the future? Obviously, look a little bit different here today. Um, I think, obviously, these are interesting times, uh, scary times for all of us um, as we think about the future. But I think it's all going to depend. I can take this off now because I don't have anyone here to infect other than my poor old wife that we've been hung up, hanging out together for the last three weeks now. But um, <clears throat> we need to look to the future and I think be wiser. Uh, it's just interesting to me that um, I've been teaching the environmental sciences sustainability for many years, but focused in the last 20 years. And we've known for 20 years that one of the big challenges was going to be a pandemic even to the extent that it was well predicted that it would be a flu-like pandemic and it would be a virus. And then we also knew that coronaviruses were going to be the problem. We had MERS um, and several others that were coronaviruses. So I think really the issue here is leadership and it is being wise and thinking outside of the box. And I hope that as we go forward, we will take a positive stand. This isn't doom or gloom. Um, we do have the technology to fix this. We have the healthcare systems to fix this. We just need to make them work properly. So that's enough of my political statement for the day. All right, so uh, we've been looking at the principle uh, principles and we've looked at it in lots of different areas. Um, the, lots of the principles have a very wide scope and some of them have been quite successful. Um, so most of them focus strictly on the values, but the ones that have been really successful focus on the implementation. They have a method, some standards, and a way to evaluate uh, success. And interestingly enough, um, several of these are in the Ag and Natural Resources. The, Forest and Stewardship Council, we talked about in an earlier lecture, uh, very successful, very widely adopted, but mostly because people can really track, uh, track that success. The LEED, L-E-E-D, which is sustainable building, you go in right from the design stage and decide if you want to be platinum, silver, platinum and gold and based on how you design and what you put into practice in terms of your sustainable practices in that building is what you get uh, allotted to. Then there's the Sustainable Wine Growing Group and uh, I've been fortunate to visit both uh, FSC and a Sustainable Wine Growing Winery up in Northern California and it's amazing. It really gives them a focus of, of how to run their businesses and it doesn't have to be at an economic cost. They truly can balance those social, the economic, and the environmental concepts, issues that they face in their particular area, in their particular context. So here's the Forest Stewardship Council, um, very successful. It's a comprehensive approach. LEED, um, this, this building kind of caught my attention looks kind of like one of those new cell towers with all the all the vegetable like matter hanging off them so you don't know it's a cell tower it looks like a pine tree but a uh, lead is very successful we have several lead buildings up here one of them that I'm familiar with is the Lewis Center the AAE that building down there at, at, in the Mojave is a lead I think platinum the Mojave Water Agency new building is a platinum or a gold uh, rating. So the themes that come out of this are really fascinating. Uh, the one that, number one in the book and the one that really resonates with us is we need to be good stewards. A good steward, remember, a steward was in biblical times, a steward was your manager. That's who you left your best things with. They don't just take something and, and kind of take care of it and, and just keep it the same, but they actually grow it and make it better, um, sort of, sort of uh, enhance it. Um, and it's, it's our relationships, um, super important in building sustainable communities, our finances, and of course our ecosystems. We need to be good stewards. 
And I think we know how to do this in certain countries. We have tremendous advantages, like in this country, with our democracy, with our constitution. We really have the framework to do this. Now is the matter of whether we as a society can help implement that. And that includes us getting involved, taking social responsibility, and also encouraging our leaders to do the same. Respect for limits, realizing that early folks didn't realize that we couldn't just take from this super abundant, crazy creation that we have, in, especially in the United States, all this amazing resources. There are limits and uh, there are certain thresholds in that where if we go over that, we can collapse a whole ecosystem, we can collapse a whole region um, and we need to have respect for that. So we, we shouldn't, for example, have unsustainable resource depletion. We need to look at the sustainable yield. If we mimic nature, a lot of these resources, other than the fossil fuels and some of the others, can be renewed. And um, so we need to stay within that renewal process, not overuse them to where they could potentially get used up. Interdependence. Realizing that we really are connected, and uh, <clears throat> this is one that's come through again for me in the COVID-19. We're not just separated from those folks in China or in Italy. We are interconnected. Our transport systems, our commerce are so integrally uh, interconnected that we can't just sort of say, well, that's your problem over there and, and we're going to do our own things. We are interdependent economically, culturally. And um, we need to look at that locally, regionally, and internationally, how we can build on this interdependence. It's a good thing. We can, we, as you know, if you <clears throat> work in community, you can get a lot more done than just trying to work on your own. Uh, economic restructuring, definitely um, a lot of talk about this right now. What, what was it about our healthcare system and the way it's set up economically um, that could be restructured? Uh, and we need to go away from a system that's all about competition and waste to a system of co cooperation and, and super efficiency in our economic systems. Fair distribution. This is the equity. Remember the E's? This is the E for social, the equity. We, if we fairly distribute education, health care, big topic right now. Certain folks are not groups of folks are not getting an equitable uh, access to our healthcare system right now. Um, employment in, is obviously a key one. We're, we're going into a third world kind of situation right now with up to a 30% unemployment rate. And uh, it just shows you how important it is that we protect that, we conserve that, we manage that employment sector very wisely. Intergenerational, yeah, it's, it's what it's all about. We need to look to the future generations. We need to look and think about what it's going to be like for our grandchildren and great-grandchildren and then work back from that because that'll just make us be, for example, follow the precautionary principle, not do things now that have devastating effects for later. And then number seven, my favorite, nature is the model, the teacher. Let's mimic nature with the natural cycles of carbon or water and uh, <clears throat> let's build on that expertise and, and realize that our technology and our great wisdom that we, that we think we have um, can learn a lot from the natural systems and how things work because that's that natural capital that is critical for us to survive. Hopeful case studies, Curitiba, Brazil, hopefully really want to take a trip down there. My wife spent a year down there as an exchange student, love to go to Brazil, lots of fascinating things going on down there. But this, uh, this city set out to be sustainable and, and actually applied these principles. 1.6 1. 6, 1. 6 million people. Lots of buses made it made buses affordable and accessible and faster. Um, 
focused in on having an industrial city, industry in a certain area that was close to where the people are. Um, city regulations like just pruning and cutting trees, how that's done, when that's done, um, and the fact that they had, you had to plant two trees for every one that was cut down. Those kinds of forward-thinking regulations, uh, when properly implemented, are, are incredible. So here's a picture of Curitiba, the, the, bu the bus system. Lots of lots of urban landscapes in this place. Um, they, they were incredibly... Um, they also looked at how you could manage the waste and people were actually getting paid for for disposing of the waste. Residents were. Another one is Kerala in southwestern India. Um, as you can probably tell, I love to travel, but this India has always fascinated me with this huge population, but this ability to survive on, on for many people, less than $1,000 a year, sometimes $100 a year. Um, and here they looked at really low consumption and they looked at education. Um, and that and looked at providing everyone with education so that we all could have a, they all could have a high quality of life and that's a really cool case study um, and even to the extent if you haven't picked your your topic yet um, because we've gone remote maybe you'll pick one of these two case studies to do your sustainable uh, project on that would be super interesting Okay, uh, sustainability provides this common language. Um, in other words, the folks that are in business and are there to make money and make sure that their companies survive and do well and compete on the stock market, that sustainability gives a common language for them to talk with